work on my own forgiveness lessons, and so I found out I was working with a, like 10, 15 uh, clients at a Goodwill Rehab Center, and I was, you know, schizophrenic, personality disorders, mental retardation. It was still my lesson in letting go of all my charges and, and all the project things I was projecting onto the clients and my supervisors and co co-workers and this and that. But and it also was seemed to be paying off student loans. So to me, that's the whole thing of just listening to the guidance and step by step, you know, going along. And then when it doesn't start, when you start to see, gee, where this is taking me is not fitting in with the system anymore. No. I liked it. It really helped me when I read the psychotherapy pamphlet because um, I kept trying my whole life to reconcile. I kept saying there has to be a job that will be my calling that I can be in and be happy, fulfilled, and complete. And I searched <laughs> a long time for that job. I kept shifting and saying, oh, it's getting closer now. I'm getting, I'm getting oh, it's psychology, and humanistic psychology, transpersonal psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just kept going and going. <laughs> but there's a line in here in the psychotherapy plans that really was helpful. It talked about the um, that the professional could be very helpful in a profession, but he could even be more helpful outside of, of one. And when I read the line, I went, "Oh!" Because it was like I had thought, "Well, I have to, I have to find a way to find be in this profession or whatever." And it just gave me. It was kind of like one of those lines. It was like gave me the permission to start looking and and. Uh, this is the first time you could look outside. Yeah. Instead of inside. Inside. Right. So. It's been interesting because I've traveled around too to hear people talk about their experiences at work. And in some cases it's it's more of just things that here or there are more just a demonstration of peace, not not a lot of verbal okay. stuff. In other cases I have a friend down in, he used to be down in Lexington, now he's up in the New England area named Takas, who came to a couple of my talks and he was working on his doctorate in um, psychology and, and psychotherapy. And in psychotherapy, you know, they have all these people that are like supervising, they have the <laughs> filming, he's videotaping all of his sessions, you know, and he's he's got some of his clients, you know, that are interested in the course, that are coming, and they're, <laughs> this is all being filmed, you know, and all these graduate professors are like just look, watching him, you know, because they've tried to teach him all these techniques of, you know, how to be a therapist, and he's just like, Holy Spirit, let's go, here we go, we got a session, and it's all being videotaped and everything like this, and he said, he said at first he was like, uh-oh, you know, I'm in this real closed, kind of a watched setting with all these graduate professors and everything that, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this, but he just said he kept trusting, and the professors were really learning, you know, they, <laughs> well, that's really interesting, the way you handled that, you know, and, and this and that, they were sharing, you know, of course, he was just calling on the Holy Spirit to do it. And that was a good example of it's kind of a place where it seems as if, we talked and I talked about how it seems like there are constraints, professional constraints that he was working under, academic constraints. But in the field of psychotherapy, it's pretty much going into the mind. And you, mm -hmm. you talked yeah. about how the whole program in the prison is based on cognitive changes, yeah. and that gives you a lot of leeway, yeah, yeah, yeah. seemingly. Mm -hmm. It's still a symbol, but it's like it seems like that's a more of a place where you could really open up as opposed to being like you were a chemist mm -hmm. or something, you know, and how, how do you bring that into your, your chemistry or whatever, but just opening up. So there's, it's, it's not like there are certain situations that are more favorable to applying the course than other situations. It can certainly seem like that on the surface. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, you've got free <laughs> reign in the prison. I can't do that. that that's the old yeah. situational thing you know, we've gone into all the time. Well, sure, Dave, if I wasn't married, right. didn't have kids, if you didn't have all these other things, if my situation was like yours, of course I could be yeah. at peace. Yeah. But you see, that's, that's the ego, again, trying to tinker with saying if the situations were different or the circumstances were different. I found that part in here, too, and the question is, is posed to Jesus. Is psychotherapy... A profession, and Jesus says, strictly speaking, the answer is no. How could a separate profession be in which 
be one in which everyone is engaged. How could and how could any limits be laid on an interaction in which everyone is both patient and therapist in every relationship in which he enters? Yet, practically speaking, it can be still it still can be said that there are those who devote themselves primarily to healing of one sort or another as their chief function, and it is to them that a large number of others turn for help. That, in effect, is the practice of therapy. These are therefore, quote, officially helpers. They are devoted to certain kinds of needs in their professional activities, although they may be far more able teachers outside of them. 